on the WB. And now, a WB series premiere event. I'm trying to help. Don't try so hard. Tonight, the WB proudly presents the series premiere of Hyperion Bay. Town ran out of money. If you don't make a move, pretty soon there won't be anything left to say. It's the story of two brothers in a small town. One never left. You're the son and Sweeney and son, not me. Because I stayed and worked. The other swore he'd never return. Maybe I feel like I owe this town something. But when he did come home, nothing would be the same. I don't know why the hell you came back. I'm trying to figure that out myself. I'm gonna miss our conversations. Me too. What is going on between you and her? You don't run away! You call me a coward? Oh, stop it! Your brother! Sydney Penny. I'm his girlfriend. Cassidy Ray. Not till he says so. Dylan Neal. If I wanted to talk about it, which I don't, I wouldn't talk about it with my kid brother. And Mark Paul Gosseler. Why do you suppose I came back? What do you think my motives are? The past and the future are about to collide in a place called Hyperion Bay. And now the saga begins. out here a lot. They stopped showing movies here a long time ago. Remember seeing Star Wars out here? Me and my big brother, Nick. Back of a station wagon with folks up front. We had a couple of flashlights that we used for lightsabers. And I was just using the light, making the droom noise. But Nick found it much more effective to just simply hit me over the head with his flashlight. You get awful talkative when you don't want to tell me something. Well, you asked me about seeing movies here. No, I asked you if you got out here a lot. In what capacity? In the capacity of what we were just doing, which included knocking your rearview mirror out of whack with my foot. Oh, in that capacity, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, a gentleman isn't supposed to... Stop looking at me like that. I'll look at you any way I want. I was almost impaled on your cigarette lighter just now. Sorry about that. You know, this car obviously has some new specific design flaws, and I don't think the boys back in Munich thought things completely through. Dennis! I'm trying to figure out what the right answer here would be. Try the truthful one. We'll see how it goes. It's a first time for everything, I guess. Is a good answer? Good answer. Get in the car and I'll show you some more. The town, I'll show you some more of the town. Going to the euphemism. Don't think you'll make half a mile on two thirds of a tank? <laughs> Training since childhood. Stop at a gas station, you gotta go. Dennis Sweeney? Trudy Carson. Oh, my God. Dennis, look at you. Why? You look great. I ran into your brother. He said you were in computers now. I guess you're doing pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. There's some computer outfit in town now. They bought the old cannery. Muse One. I saw the sign. <laughs> it's, it's not Muse One. It's Muse Prime. It's that little one yeah. in the corner. It's, that's my company. 
Your company? Well, I work for them. That's why I came back, you know, to get the facility up and running. I'm impressed. Hi. Hello. Dennis, you're dripping. Uh, Jennifer, this is Trudy Carson. I went to high school with her. And, uh, Trudy, this is my friend Jennifer. Jennifer Worth. Hi. Nice to meet you. But it's not Carson anymore. I'm married. Nelson Tucker. Do you remember him? Oh, yeah. I remember Nelson. You are not going to believe you stop for gas. It's Dennis Sweeney. You remember Dennis from high school? Dennis Sweeney. Oh, Nick's kid brother. <laughs> How you doing? Okay. Dennis is going to be in charge of that new computer thing they're building on the wharf in the old cannery. Uh, yeah, that's great, I guess. A lot of new people moving into town to work there. Fresh blood. Yeah, they drive a lot of those yuppie trucks. Great for business, how they go through gas. Gas. And this is Jennifer, a friend of Dennis. Hi. Hi. Uh, here you go. Thanks. Oh, we gotta go. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. I'll see you around. Jeez, Nick Sweeney's kid brother. I used to beat the crap out of that little jerk off. That's right. We used to. I spent 21 years in mourning for someone I've never been. It's funny how everybody only sees what they want to see. Spend your life avoiding surprises. Are you really living or just giving in? Falling in love again. Give me a little grace. Falling seems to be what I do most. I think everything is falling. your girlfriend? Who? Oh. Who? That girl, Trudy. Well, what have you been thinking about this? Did you go out with her in high school? No, I did not go out with Trudy Carson. But you wanted to. What? Yeah, you want a lot of things when you're a kid. So your thoughts did turn to her during those long adolescent nights <laughs> alone in your room. <laughs> oh, my God, she was a cheerleader. Of course, I... Yeah, I, I sort of thought of her, but I was in the computer club. We didn't even breathe the same air. Well, I was a cheerleader. You're going out with me? You were a cheerleader? Yeah, we thought of ourselves more as motivational gymnasts, but yeah, I've done the pom-pom and the splits. Huh. How do you like that? They got me a cheerleader. <laughs> Don't make it sound like I'm some three-point elk you want to mount over the fireplace. It didn't come out anywhere near how it was supposed to. <laughs> What exactly is a three-point elk? How should I know? There must be an elk that scores from the foul line. I like it? I like it. It's, um, very anti-Dilbert. Yeah. Do you like it? I'd like it more if it were finished. Hey, Steckler! Sweetie. Thanks. Welcome to Ground Zero. Hi, Larry Steckler, your time life operator. Uh, hi. Uh, Larry, this is Jennifer Worth, my friend. Uh, friends are very important. Uh, excuse us a second. Sure. 
How are we doing? Not awful. You saw the outhouse. Yeah, what's the deal with that? Municipal services did not finish the hookup. They stopped three feet short of where our pipes start. I've been trying to reach the town supervisor, this guy, Corber. <laughs> That's so weird, Mr. Corber being town supervisor. You say Mr. Corber like Mr. was his first name. Well, it is, sort of. Mr. Corber was uh, vice principal when I was in high school. Oh, so now they made him vice principal of the whole town. Mm-hmm. Now, Borden will be here tomorrow morning early. You'll assemble the troops for inspection. You'll get what I've got. Hey, Dennis, what are we doing here? And, and don't tell me preparing the company for the next millennium. I, I know that. I just want to know why we're doing it in a place that's three days' ride from near Starbucks. Because if David Lean had made Lawrence of Arabia in a nice, comfortable studio, no one would have bought a ticket. Now, see, now that's Borden Higgs talk. I'm asking you why. Get Mr. Corber on the phone. Tell him I want a meeting. Let's get this water thing taken care of. Hello, is this someone with good news or money? Look. That's my dog! Edsel! Mm. Edsel, what are you doing? Hey! Look at you. Come here. Hey, big boy. Look at you. That's a very old dog. Who? Edsel? Look at him. He's a puppy. Oh. Dennis? Amy! How are you? Aww. Oh, good. How are you? Good. Jennifer, this is Amy, my brother Nick's wife. Jennifer? Oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> Nick and your dad are coming from the office, and your mom's in the backyard. What's she doing out there? Your dad's going to cook steaks. But it's Wednesday. Yeah, steak night has been moved in honor of your return. Oh, oh, oh. Look what I found. Hey. Hey, yourself. Mm. Oh. oh. How are you? Oh, fine. How was the drive? It was great. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Mom, meet Jennifer. Hello, Mrs. Sweeney. Oh, Marjorie, please. His grandmother's Mrs. Sweeney. Okay. Marjorie? So go get the charcoal in the garage for me. Uh, I'm not so sure I like steak night shifting from Friday to Wednesday. It's like the earth has slipped on its axis. Dennis? Ponder later. Fetch briquettes now. Okay. Yeah, sure. It's my turn, Nick. No way, Jess. You'll break it. Dad said I could run it. You don't know how to run it. Because you won't let me. Chuck. Dad! Here. Welcome home. He kept this. Why did he keep this? Well, maybe he figured one of us would have kids and they'd want it. Well, we didn't play with it that much. I think he built it for himself. Then I guess he keeps it for himself. You know, Dad does stuff like that. Holds on to things. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Pretty girl in the backyard. She come with you? Uh-huh. Amazing. I'm an amazing guy, haven't you heard? You do all kinds of tricks, don't you? I drove out of this town in a used Civic and turned it into a new Mercedes. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Seems like my little brother's just got magic dripping from his fingertips. Yeah. And even change Wednesday into steak night. Uh, so they hook up your pipes yet at the building? Not yet. We do a lot of work with the town. If you want, I could talk to Corber about it. No, it's OK. I can handle it. You going to stay in the house with Mom and Dad? No. No, no. <laughs> that uh, wouldn't work. Not with Jennifer. Afraid to have sex under your parents' roof, huh? Oh, I'm less afraid of the roof than I am of their ears. You know, Amy and I had sex in the house before we were married. You did not. We did, too. Of course, folks were in Gilroy when that happened soon. Where was I? Oh, I don't know, someplace else. <laughs> I don't believe you. I mean, weren't you afraid Mom would, you know, notice something? Well, sure, that's why we did it in your room. You like it rare, don't you? No, I like it medium, Dad. You're getting it rare. It's been a long time since I've had a steak. What, you figure you don't eat meat? You live forever? 
You mean I've been misinformed? We won't always be at the top of the food chain. Enjoy it while it lasts. So how's the food chain been doing around here these days? Sort of thin there for a while, but things are going to pick up. Yeah, we got bids in on a couple of new projects. Big retail strip going in along Cooper Road. We'll get a piece of that. Yeah, Leonard Crowley's developing it. Leonard Crowley. I remember him when all he did was septic tanks. Now he's a developer. Hey, Dad, are you sure about the concrete on that bid? It looked kind of low to me, you know? Low for us, not for Crowley. Electrical, somebody has to explain to him, but concrete, he knows. Must be all those years in septic tanks. <laughs> Bound to pick up something, huh? <laughs> <laughs> My boss was coming into town tomorrow. What's his name again? Borden Hicks. I've heard of him, I think. Oh, well, he, he was on the covers of Time and Newsweek last month. Oh, well, I guess we missed those, huh, Dad? You know, probably busy watching C-SPAN again. You know us. And... <laughs> <laughs> I wants to see what I'm getting him into down here. Who does? My boss. You know, with the cannery and everything? Looks like you put a lot of work in there. At least what I can tell from the outside. Yeah. Yeah, we did. <clears throat> yeah, you know, the, the thing is, it, it's um, a specialized sort of job, you know, taking a place like that and retooling it for a completely different use. And the guys that did the conversion, well, we've sort of used them before, so it just, <laughs> it just made sense for us to use them again. Yeah. I figured it was something like that. I think these are done. Well, I think they're still moving. <laughs> She's pretty, your brother's girl. What does she do? Ah, uh, Dennis said something about her working in an art gallery. are going to have to tell them. Maybe it'll be easier with your brother back in town. How's it going to make anything easier? I don't know. But it changes things, doesn't it? Just because a thing changes doesn't mean it's better. Hey, you two. Quit necking and eat supper. machine. So he could fly low over farmland and scare the militia groups. Version 4 of the office suite before Christmas, and the beta of the enhanced telecommunications package by spring. Running water would be nice, too, don't you think? I have a meeting with the town supervisor in the morning. That gun could never fire those balls. <laughs> it's a replacement gun. 
The VFW donated it after the class of 84 rolled the old cannon into the bay. Dennis, when I picked you for this project, I told you you could set up anywhere. They spoke English and had electricity. You could have gone to Scotland, to India, Lake Havasu City, Arizona, but instead you took my money and spent it here in a town where the balls don't fit the cannon. It's accessible to San Francisco and Los Angeles without being part of the urban sprawl, flexible zoning, adaptable facilities, and lucky for you, I knew about it because it's my hometown. Lucky me. If you'd been a favorite son, if you loved this place, if you were a real booster, I'd understand your enthusiasm, but you didn't like growing up here, did you, Dennis? You didn't fit in. What makes you say that? Well, it's the same for all of us in this business. It also makes for the century's biggest joke. We didn't fit into their America, but that's all gone. We're in charge. They're scrambling to fit in with us. Maybe I had a better time here than you think. Maybe I feel like I owe this town something. It's on the ropes and I can save it. You want to save it? Dip it in bronze. Because if your little test kitchen lives up to expectations, I will build a new factory here. And if I build a factory here, other people will too. Then the town you tell me you want to save will be erased. But then, maybe that's what you really want. They're watching us. Your town. By dinner, they'll all know about the long talk Dennis Sweeney had with Borden Hicks. With all due respect, Borden, the people of this town have no idea who you are. Oh, they know I'm the man who came in his own helicopter and smiled at you. Put his hand on your shoulder, indicating trust and satisfaction. That's what they'll see. And you like that idea, don't you? They took the ball bound. You know, my grandmother had this thing about making sure that there was a light bulb in every fixture. <laughs> Otherwise, she was afraid that electricity would leak out of the socket. <laughs> so, is it serious? You and Jennifer? Could be. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind if it turned out that way. You wouldn't mind. How romantic. <laughs> oh, what am I supposed to say? I'm still pretty new at this relationship business. I mean, you and Nick, you guys have been at it forever. I mean, you, you're the old pros at it. I'm just trying to follow your lead. Well, I wouldn't follow too close. Uh, Nick and I went to see a lawyer. We're going to separate. Well, it's something that we've been talking about or not talking about. Anyway, we're going to do it. Oh, uh... Um... Do my folks know about this? No. At least I don't think they do. Your mom might be suspicious, but that's probably just me being paranoid. Why? I forgot that about you. What? The way you ask questions all the time. I'm my kid brother. It's part of my job description. Then ask Nick. Don't ask me. You think he knows something about this you don't? 
God, I hope so. Because I can't figure out what went wrong. Things have just gotten awful quiet. Quiet and cold. Like this town. It's like we don't have summers here anymore. Winter just sort of lingers. Street lights come on at three in the afternoon. And people try not to move too much. Dennis, there's not much left of this place. I don't know why the hell you came back. I'm Hal Fishman. It's okay, I'm awake. You don't have to sneak around. I wasn't sneaking. You know, I've noticed something the past couple weeks. You know what? Each morning you get up earlier to run. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> yes, you do. Started ever since I told you we were coming down here. I think you're imagining things. No. You used to toss the Chronicle on the bed on your way out, then I realized you were going out before the kid even delivered the paper, and you started even earlier since we got here. I figure your morning run is gonna start at sunset the previous day. I like to run. You know that? I never make a secret of it. I'm not complaining, I'm just commenting. Well, it's so early. What are you doing up? Inside of my head's too noisy to sleep. I think my brother and his wife are planning to get a divorce. Amy said that she saw a lawyer. That's too bad. They've been together forever. I, I can't remember a time that they weren't some sort of couple. I just... Dennis, please don't tell me this. I'm just telling you what's going on. I know. I don't want to get involved. I'm not talking about a fender bender in a parking lot. I'm talking about my family. Yeah, your family. All this history, it's yours. It's not mine, it's not ours. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it. Well, I, I'm trying to figure that out myself, Jen, all right? Maybe that's one of the reasons why I came back here, to figure stuff out. Why are you getting so squirrely about this? I mean, I realize that you, your parents are divorced, but a family is a family, isn't it? Most of what I know about families is strictly hearsay. One-on-one, -on -one, I'm fine. I can handle people one at a time. All these, these connections. Jenna. No, please. Just let me run, okay? Okay. You never had a dream like this, never felt the cold, cold steel. I was just heading over to the cannery. Thought you could walk me over. See the place, have some coffee? Well, just about to head out, but uh, take a rain check. Sure. Listen, Nick, last night I was talking to Amy and she kind of told me what was going on. Yeah, what's that? About you and her. What about me and her? She said that the two of you were having a little trouble. <laughs> Amy didn't say that. Amy doesn't talk like that. Having a little trouble. Nobody talks like that. She said that you saw a lawyer, you're thinking of separating. <laughs> yeah, that's more like something she'd say. So is that what's happening? You know, it's really nothing you have to worry about.
Is there something you want me to do? <sighs> yeah. How about keeping your mouth shut in front of Mom and Dad? Come on, Nick, besides that, you know, to help. I mean, uh, maybe you want to talk about it. If I wanted to talk about it, I wouldn't talk about it with my kid brother. I'm trying to help. Don't try so hard. Dennis Sweeney. Mr. Corber. Good to see you. Great to have you back. Larry, this is Mr. Corber, Town Supervisor Larry Steckler, my number one. Mr. Corber. Call me Bart, Larry. Dennis, you remember Henry Otto, don't you? I think he was still teaching when you were there. Sure I do. Yeah, good to see you, Dennis. Larry? Hi. Oh, my office, gentlemen? Your office? Where are the walls and the door? <laughs> A different kind of office, Mr. Corber. <laughs> Again, we're willing to do whatever we can do to help. We're talking about three feet of pipe here. Like I said, it's not that big a problem. It depends on which end of the pipe you're on. And I was promised full municipal services in time to open this facility. I, I staffed on the basis of that promise. Now I've got 60 people going to the bathroom in the parking lot. When am I going to be hooked up? I'll level with you, Dennis. We knew there wasn't enough in the general construction budget to run all the lines you boys requested. And now, the council is saying we can take money from general contingency and put it into the municipal services. So, without putting too fine a point on it, the town simply ran out of money before we could complete your hookup. Town ran out of money. Three feet from where my pipes start. Well, I, I, I wonder what kind of creative solution we can find for this little problem. It seems to me you've made a considerable investment here, Dennis, and we figured you'd be anxious to protect it. By investing a little more. Well, we're not sure, but that might actually be the quickest solution under the circumstances. Yeah. Three feet of pipe. <laughs> Excuse me. Three of pipe. That's not much. I mean, I, I could pay for that. I could pay for that and not even feel it. Yeah, yeah, the, the thing is, I'd always remember I had to pay for it. Oh, with all the expenditures I'm responsible for and resources I'm bringing into this town worth potential millions, I'm just worried that every time flush a toilet, turn on the faucet to fill a coffee pot. I'm always going to have to remember paying for three extra feet of pipe. Now, I don't think something like this would affect my abilities as a manager, which is good, because the success of this facility depends on my success. It's not worth worrying about. I mean, it's three feet. I mean, I can always get another job. And the town could always get another factory. You know what I'm thinking we should do? I'm thinking we just might go back to the council and get them to be a little more flexible. Take a common sense approach. Exactly. Gosh, that'd be great. Wouldn't that, Larry? That'd be terrific. Work, work. Do you mind if I join you? We could catch up on old times. <laughs> uh, I don't remember you and I having any old times together. 
Does that mean I can't sit with you now? The series premiere of Hyperion Bay will continue on the WB. Mr. Sweeney? Mr. Sweeney? Hey. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you. Listen. Hear that? That's an endangered species. The foghorn? Coast Guard wants to dismantle all the foghorns. People got satellite computers in their boats so they don't get lost anymore. They don't need the horns. It's bull. Lots of people don't have that satellite crap. People still get lost. This is the cannery. Yeah, it's the cannery. I started playing around with these when I found out Dennis's outfit bought the place. Just some ideas about how to convert it. What did he think of them? He never saw these. They went with another outfit. I checked them out. They're good. A lot of experience with all that high-tech stuff. He was right to go with them. It was a smart way to go. Listen, Jennifer, don't tell Dennis about these, okay? So yesterday I pull out my yearbook, and you're not in it. You're listed as a camera-shy senior. Why didn't you want to be in the yearbook? Well, I knew I wasn't going to buy a copy, so what was the point of being in it? You didn't buy a yearbook? Your own yearbook? <laughs> Trudy. You and I had very different experiences in high school. You didn't have a good time. <laughs> no, I did not have a good time. Well, I had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this makes you feel any better. But maybe you were lucky or smart or something. You didn't use up all the good times in high school. You save something for later. Yeah. Try to think of it like that. And it's a very reasonable and mature way to look at things. But back when we were in school, if somebody had asked me at the right moment, I'd have traded the future sight unseen for something very simple in the then and there. What's going on? Just talking about the good old days. <laughs> I thought you were coming back to the station. Oh, I thought you were coming here. I guess we got our wires crossed. Yeah, I guess so. Well. Well. It was nice talking to you, Dennis. Good talking to you. I'm just supposed to let you kiss my wife? Actually, she kissed me. It's the same thing, isn't it? You're going to have to decide that. I used to give you a pretty hard time back in school. Yes, you did. You know, some people, they naturally get it rougher than other people. But maybe there's some good in that. You know, maybe it helps build a character getting picked on. Make them tougher so you can face the world better. Hmm. High school is boot camp. Interesting way of looking at it. I mean, you did pretty OK for yourself coming from the school of hard knocks. Yeah, so, so I should thank you? No. I just don't want you to hold a grudge. 
that's all. Leave him alone, Nelson. We're just having a conversation. Yeah, yeah. Just get out of his face. Nick, it's okay. We should go anyway. Thanks for the beer. You're welcome. What was the idea behind that? Oh, I didn't want him causing trouble. Oh, Nelson? Yeah, Nelson. I used to have to pull him off you twice a week, if you remember. Well, that was before any of us had a driver's license. You know, I, I've picked up a couple of skills since then. Well, pardon me for saving your ass. Well, my ass was in no immediate jeopardy, not from Nelson Tucker. God, you know, I should have just let him beat you up. He was not going to beat me up. Not now, back then. I should let you take care of your own fights. Nothing. No, answer the question. Just if I'd let Nelson pound you more often, things might have worked out different. How so? Maybe you would have learned something about being a man. <laughs> you work around a lot of solvents and fumes, because that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, at least I don't work in a room with a bunch of albino geeks tapping on little keys. You know, I can do more with those keys than Nelson could ever do with his fists. And I think he sort of knows that, which puts him way ahead of you. You're still in the damn playground. You know what I learned in the playground? You don't run away. You run away in the playground, you end up running your own life. You calling me a coward? I'm not calling you anything. I'm just saying I stayed and you left. And now I'm back. Oh, yeah. Now you're back. And suddenly steak night is Wednesday. I did not tell Dad to change steak night. The whole point is that he did it. He never moved it from me. I had to change my own wedding so it wouldn't conflict with steak night. But you, you ride in like the prodigal son in a new Mercedes and a pretty girlfriend and a whole busload of programmers like some software cavalry here to save the town. And Dad, well, Dad, he's so impressed. Dad, impressed by me? You make it sound like he cares what I do. He doesn't care. He never did. The only time he ever acknowledged that I had some specialized skills when I programmed his VCR. You're the son in Sweeney and son, not me. Because I stayed and worked. I'm the one who deserves it because I'm the one who did what I was supposed to do instead of running away. Is that why your marriage is screwed up? Is that why you're running away from Amy? Hey! What the hell do you think you're doing? He started it! You started it! You... I don't care who started it. I'm stopping it. Get off. Stop it. It's your brother. You can't depend on your family. You can't depend on your friend. You can't depend on what your happened? beginning. You Come can't on, depend on what your what end. You what can't what depend on intelligence. Baby, you can't depend on any God. You can depend on only one thing, honey. You need a busload of faith to get by. 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 Oh, you need a busload of faith. Tonight's Hyperion Bay included music from Lou Reed, the Kenny Wayne Shepherd Band, and Dog's Eye View.